Hey guys, it is time for one of my favorite types of video that I do on my channel, that is following vintage beauty guides. The wealth of information that is out there from previous decades is just amazing and I'm always surprised by how relevant all the information that is shared still is. So today I am going to be well, we are going to be watching a grooming guide from the 1940s. I believe it is from 1946 and it is part of a campaign for ponds. I feel like this is a running theme through all of these. They're usually a part of a commercial or some type of product promotion. But yeah, ponds in this case. It's quite a long video. It's a half an hour long. So as always, I will link the video in the description box so you can watch it in its entirety if you are interested in it. It is really fascinating, but we are just going to watch a few bits here and see if there's anything we can take away from it. If there's anything I can try out straight away, then of course I will. The hostess, I guess I'd say of the video, is a lady named Mary, if I'm correct. The video starts with her hosting a surprise bridal shower for a friend who just got engaged, if I understand correctly. And then at the party, they all start talking and they ask Mary for advice on how to be glamorous and all that type of stuff and then she talks about how she gives lectures in high schools to young girls about grooming and beauty and stuff like that and then it kind of switches to one of those lectures and we get to watch all of that how she kind of teaches girls how they should you know look and act in that regard so that's what we're gonna watch today so I guess let's just play this and see what happens good morning girl I'm going to talk to you this morning about the way you look. Now, I've heard it said that we women attach too much importance to our appearance. But that isn't true. After all, the way we look exerts so much influence on the way we feel and on the way other people feel about us that it really is very important. When I talk about good appearance or good grooming or looking your best, you probably think immediately of clothes or hairstyle or makeup. Please remember that they are just really the trimmings. Just like the icing on the cake. If the icing is very good, well, that's fine. But if the cake itself isn't good, you'd soon lose interest in the icing. So let's that start with the cake and so come back to the true. trimmings later. So true. Basically, of course, good health and intelligent physical care are the foundations of all beauty. We all want a lovely skin, shining eyes, a beautiful smile and loads of pep, but we can't have them except in a healthy, clean body. And I mean clean. Remember, you can't have good looks without soap and water. Brilliant teeth need brushing. Gleaming hair means frequent and thorough shampooing. And keep that air of freshness by using a deodorant regularly. It's a shortcut to social security. Sleep comes next to cleanliness as a beauty base. And I mean sleep. Not just going to bed, if that means sitting up writing letters or listening to music. I've seen lots of sparkling eyes and good complexion sacrificed to swing records at bedtime. Mind you, I I'm all for music in its place. But there is a lot of sound sense in that old expression, beauty sleep. So far to that the light early swing music for night, bed trip. get eight or nine hours of this most effective beauty treatment. And then there's this business of eating. It worries me to see that so many girls think a balanced diet consists of soda pop and a sandwich or a big gooey sundae. Let's remember what we were taught in home economics about a well-balanced diet. Meat, cheese, eggs or fish, milk, butter, bread, fresh fruits, especially citrus fruits, green and starchy vegetables in proper proportion, and of course some sweets. And please go easy on fried foods. We can skip the Beautiful first two skin, thirds of that vitality, list. Glossy hair, Don't need those. <laughs> all the things you want begin with a balanced diet. Then there's exercise, preferably outdoors. And when I say exercise, many of you may think of work. Well, a little work is a helpful beauty hint, but so is outdoor play. I'll leave it to your own conscience whether you work in the garden, ride a bike, play ball, hike, swim or ski. But try to spend some time every day outdoors, developing the grace that comes from toned up muscles and the complexion that goes with good circulation. <laughs> and even the ordinary things that you do every day can help to make you more graceful. But not if you do them like this. 
Walking upstairs, reaching up to a high shelf, dusting, all can be good body conditioning if you use your muscles to do them vigorously instead of slouching through them. We've had vigorous cleaning in another one of these videos. I, I don't believe. know whether you think of posture as a beauty subject, but it is just as much as it is a health subject. So let's talk about posture for beauty. Believe me, it is important because regardless of how much or how little money you spend for clothes, they can't do the whole job of making you look your best unless you give them a certain amount of support. I don't often advise you to take examples from the movies, but just watch any good movie actress for posture. Notice how she walks, goes up and down stairs, sits down and gets up. Why, if her posture weren't perfect, she wouldn't be a movie star. You know, bad posture sort of sneaks up on you when you're not thinking about it. This is so true and something I have struggled with all my life. I have really bad posture and I feel like it is one of the kind of least charming things about me. You don't really see it in videos much unless I'm filming from like further away, but yeah, this is a problem that I have and I do try to pay attention to it. But yeah, posture definitely, definitely hitting a lot of good points here. So I'm gonna skip forward just a little bit while she talks about bad habits like, you know, biting nails and twirling your hair, which by the way, I also do. <laughs> And then she also talks about clothing, like how to maintain clean clothing, how important it is to find the right cut and fit for you, that you should regularly clean your collars and make sure that your hemline is straight and all your buttons are sewn <laughs> to keep the seams on your stockings straight. But I'm gonna skip forward to where she talks about more like makeup things. Now occasionally I hear the expression, well, it's the face I was born with and there's nothing I can do about it. Well, that isn't quite true. Any girl can do a lot to get the most out of her look. The basic requirement is a clear, glowing skin. There's no substitute for that. And since the skin is nourished by the bloodstream, the things that you eat and the exercise you take have a lot to do with the way you look. The most important thing I can tell you about the care of your skin from the outside is keep it clean. Okay, so there's a whole bit of, like, Pond's commercial here, <laughs> um, where she talks about various, like, skincare products and things like that, but it's it's all pretty basic. So, again, I will have the whole video linked down below if you want to check all of that out. If you're off on a date instead of off to bed, makeup comes after cleansing. And I mean after. Never apply new makeup without first removing all of the old. With the help of these two young ladies, I'm going to try to give you a few pointers on go. applying your makeup. Here we go. The first step is a smooth base. For that, you can use either a makeup pat or vanishing cream. If the pat is used, you blend it on over your entire face using a damp sponge or cotton. Apply it sparingly. And while still moist, blend it to super smoothness with your fingertips. If instead of the pat you use vanishing cream, the light touch is equally important. Put a little on forehead, cheeks and chin and spread it evenly clear up to the hairline. If you use rouge, try putting Whoa, it on... Oh, that's so fast. The good old foundation with hands. <laughs> I don't know, I used to do my foundation like this for a long time and I still do feel like it's a nice way to apply foundation. It just gives a very natural look and it does work it into the skin really well. If you use rouge, try putting it on with the tri-dot system. One dot directly under the pupil of the eye, the second on the cheekbone, and the third no lower than the tip of the nose. Okay, so for rouge, I'm just gonna go for my good old red lipstick again, since I don't have a cream blusher. One dot directly under the pupil of the eye, the second on the cheekbone, and the third, no lower than the tip of the nose. Now fill in the triangle lightly and blend in carefully until no one can see that the rouge is there. Not even you. Hmm. I'm not quite sure how I feel about the tri-dot technique. I have a very kind of low face, so the space between my eyes and the tip of my nose is very small and my blush ended up very high on my face and I don't think this is necessarily the most flattering place for me to wear it. I, I feel like it almost looks like a sunburn applied this way on me. Nothing dates you as much as rouge that shows. Lipstick is your exclamation point. 
Use it sparingly, but well. Use two strokes to outline the upper lip and one long stroke for the lower. Fill in with up and down strokes so that the lipstick goes with the grain of the skin. Be sure that your lipstick harmonizes with your rouge and your nail polish. And check with any reds in your costume to see that everything is in key. After applying your lipstick, blot off the excess with a tissue. Last, your powder. It goes over your makeup, all over your face. Choose the shade carefully. When you find one that blends in with the color of your skin, no lighter, that's your shade. If your skin is on the sallow side, you'll want a powder one note rosier. And please avoid the too powdered look. Use a clean puff or fresh piece of cotton and keep it well filled. Press it lightly all over your face, starting at the forehead and working down. Use a loosely folded tissue to brush excess powder away, giving particular attention to hairline and brows. And before you leave, take a good look at your face. And remember, lots of people will see you in profile. So be sure that the makeup goes all the way around to the sides. That is very minimal. <laughs> no eye makeup whatsoever. Um, no eyebrows, no nothing. It's just foundation, blush and lipstick. I feel like I need a little bit of concealer and I can use some mascara. I think I would like it more if there was at least a little bit of something going on. I especially need a little bit of under eye concealer. <laughs> okay, moving on. I do have to say it's quite a nice and natural look. I just personally would prefer to skip foundation and mm, wear something on the eyes and underneath the eyes instead. Now I know you want me to tell you something about hairstyling. I do. In selecting a hairstyle, remember that your hair is the frame for your face. Pie chart? <laughs> oh no, it's a face chart. The ideal facial contour is supposed to be the oval. But some of us have round faces or square faces or long faces. So what can we do to make our faces appear a little more oval? Let's start with round faces. That's me. Here's a face that lacks a little in length and has a little too much width for the cheekbones for a good oval. Now let's see what can be done to make it better or worse. First, let's take hair. A feather cut wouldn't be too bad on this face if kept in hand. But an overgrown feather cut gives too much hair at the sides and on the forehead and adds to the effect of roundness. And this is a typical example of how not to wear your lipstick, with emphasis on quantity rather than quality. One other point for round face. Don't wear too high a neckline or a large bow at the neck. It shortens the neck and increases the effect of roundness. I am sorry, Mary. I'm a disgrace. <laughs> okay, so it appears I have done everything wrong. I am wearing a high neckline. I have a nice round hairstyle with a good set of bangs. Everything to accentuate the roundness of my face. You know what, though? I actually really like round faces. I think they are very cute. And I don't mind my round face at all. And I don't necessarily go for oval. So, you know, I don't really mind that I look so round, I guess. <laughs> but for the sake of the video, I'm gonna see what she has to say and follow the tips to make myself look better and not as offensively round. Now let's start over again and see the right way. Here is a very good hairdo for this type of face, with the hair well off the forehead and flat against the temples. The lipstick is applied correctly to follow the natural mouth line. A v-neck completes the picture and gives the impression of a little more neck length to help make round face look oval. You see, there's quite a difference between this and this. Okay, so it does actually look prettier on the chart, but oh, I really, really don't like hairstyles like that. I, precisely because I always feel like they make my head look really long. <laughs> Just, oh, okay, I am gonna try though. So it is flat on the sides and then high up top and I need to wear a v-neck because this is apparently all wrong. Let's do this. Let me just move this mirror a little bit so you can see how elongated my neck is. So that's important apparently. There we are. Can you see that? See why I look much less round already. Now I think what I need to do next is 
get rid of my bangs and go for a nice and high hairstyle. It's narrow on the sides. That is literally my least favorite shape of hairstyle. Okay, but I'm gonna go for it. So how do we achieve something like that? Nice little poof up top. It's gonna back up my bangs and that should make them stand up. Right. Hmm. Maybe with a high ponytail instead. Okay. This is the Mary approved hair shape for me. I don't know. I just, I think this is a matter of personal taste, but I just really, really don't like this shape of hair on myself. Yeah, probably just, you know, personal preference. It's just not a hairstyle I like. Um, may have overdone it a little bit on the height anyway, but it is quite high on her as well, the little chart. All right, so let's see what else we have. Of course, she goes through the other face shapes, so if you're interested in that, again, I will have the whole video in the description box. Well, it's nearly time for your next class, so I must stop talking. But there's one more thing that I'd like to say, and that is don't copy. Not hairstyles or mannerisms or anything else. Not from anybody, in or out of Hollywood. Get ideas from people, certainly. But be sure they're ideas that can be adapted to your own personality. After all, each of you is an original. And an original is always more valuable than a copy whether it be paintings, or hats, or girls. I love that! That is such a valuable message and so true. I definitely agree with that. I cannot stand this hair. <laughs> oh, this is very distracting to me. I don't like this one bit. Anyways, I think being yourself is the most beautiful thing you can do. And that pretty much concludes the videos. And then she just kind of calls a few girls up to um, ask a few questions. And there's a few more kind of like encouraging words and things like that. There are a few things that she says that are definitely dated and some things that I don't really necessarily agree with. But I feel like at the base, this is really sound advice that many people could still, you know, profit from nowadays. I really like how this focus is not on kind of beauty, but just grooming to make the best of what you already have. So there's no need to change how you look. You just want to kind of polish it up and make it um, presentable, I guess. And I really, really like that. That's something that I can definitely get behind as well. I don't entirely agree with the whole face shape and hairstyles thing, but I do have to say that if you look at those charts and for the other face shapes as well, it does always look a lot better in the kind of good version than their wrong version. <laughs> Maybe I'm just gonna have to, you know, accept that, that that this looks better on me. But then again, that is me just in 2018 going, I want to wear whatever I like. <laughs> and I do think that that is something you should definitely be able to do. And face shapes and things like that is not something I have ever really worried about, just because I feel like there is charm in every face shape. So I think that's a tip I'm gonna disregard anyways, but I really, really like the general idea behind this. So I think I'm gonna end the video here. If I'm not mistaken, it should be pretty long by now. So <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed watching this 1940s, 1946 grooming guide with me. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for loads more beauty and lifestyle content. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, there's a link in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. There's another video here that you may also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye!